Hello everyone, uh, this is George Gurjev, Law of Three, Law of Seven series, and this is going to be the ninth video. And slowly and gradually, we will start applying uh, what we have learned in Law of Three and Law of Seven towards something called as astronomy. So this session is going to be very important because once you understand this fundamental part, the things that we are going to look at, that is astronomy, and we are going to measure astronomy in terms of logarithmic tables so this will be very important in terms of understanding the interpretations so please stay tuned and we'll start discussing further right and if you are also interested in the courses which are there so you can definitely go on our website or just contact us across on the, the details over here so we'll definitely touching get in touch with you okay see you so octaves uh, we are going to interpret in terms of uh, astronomy as an octave let's try to see if we are able to get some ratios overall into that part also so this is the sun and these are the various planets uh, being sun stationary so we'll try to see everything in terms of the distance that is one way at looking of all the things and uh, second thing is looking in terms of uh, the number of days which are been required to complete an orbit. Let's say for, if you look at the number of days, that's specifically, so this are length of days and years of the planets. So we have something calculations, uh, which are already there available. So it is all in terms of Earth days. That is the first part. Let's say, for example, we have this all details. Let's try to do a comparison. Let's say, for example, somewhere around 100, we are considering one. So just, to be on safer side no this is not any calculation but we are just taking it for pure reference that's it nothing we just want to see in terms of a number what is going to be the other numbers so let's say for example 100 is one so venus is going to be 2.25 or it can be 2.5 either way whatever it doesn't matter earth is going to be 3.5 approximately mars is going to be seven rocks jupiter 4300 so it's going to be 43 here it's going to be 108 because it is 55. So that goes to the nearest round number. And Uranus is 307. So weight is there. If it is taking 100 days, it is taking somewhere around 602. Only for reference, telling that, okay, this is huge. You can just imagine the numbers as such and try to see what is there. So and let's go to the second part, which is yep, this one. So uh, NASA's website, so you can definitely go over there and try to find out solar system sizes and distance. You'll be able to get that. Now start with Mercury. Mercury is the first one. And if we consider in terms of uh, million, uh, million kilometers as such, it's going to be 57. So it's the unit strength, 100,000, 10,000. And this is going to be billion. Mercury is going to be 57. Venus is going to be 108. Earth is going to be 149. Mars. 227 but as we cross somewhere around from mars to jupiter yes the number becomes huge right so the distance becomes huge and if you go to saturn again it becomes a bigger number as such and uranus and then neptune so if we consider this you can at least randomly just try to have a wild guess in terms of the distance how huge is the distance and you gradually as you move further but we need to have some reference so that we are able to at least bring it on a scale as such specifically. So that's why we are trying to do this calculation. Here we have something in terms of astronomical unit. So what is one astronomical unit is in terms of distance from sun. So we have considered this as uh, one astronomical unit as such. Why? Because we are doing it for reference from Earth. So everything is to be considered from Earth. To sun so that is one and on the basis of that probably this are the numbers that we are getting right now uh, if we look at these things logically what we understand is probably if the distance yes this is smaller this is smaller but as you go further yes probably the distance which is there yes this is almost five times this is 10 times this is 20 times and this is going to be 30 times right so yes now probably you have a better picture in terms of understanding how much far the other planets are there. So this is going to be 1.5 times. This is going to be 5 times. This is going to be 10 times. This is going to be 20 times approx. And this is going to be 30 times. Right. So yes, let's try to bring across these numbers more of in terms of. Uh, yep. Now, now we have got a good comparison in terms of uh, the distance. Right. Because we have the distance which is there from Earth. So on the basis of distance. Why? Because 
we can actually feel the distance. We can see how far the sun is there from Earth, Mother Earth. So on the basis of that, yes, this comparison can be really easy for us to understand. But in terms of uh, scale, let's try to use a better scale. And this scale is going to be something really important. This is called as logarithmic scale. So for understanding logarithmic scale, you can definitely go on Google and try to find out more information about that. I'll just tell you a basic idea. Let's say, for example, we are considering the planet Earth to be at one astronomical unit. Right. So that is going to be there. Uh, right. So. So this is how it is going to be. So from one to maybe probably it's going to be two astronomical unit, three, four. And then as it goes closer to 10, we get it. Why? Because here we can define it in a very precise way altogether. So this is what uh, the logarithmic scale looks like. This is really important for us to understand why, because. Uh, the further calculations are going to be there on the basis of uh, this one and probably this will be making us much more easier for things to understand, right? Uh, this is one of the ways and this is quite very critical because uh, it makes things much more easier for us to understand. Cool, so this looks nice uh, in terms of distance and rest of the parts. So let's say for example, we have, we'll start with Earth. So Earth is one astronomical unit which comes down over here. So this is one. Uh, we have next is Mars, which is 1.5. So probably between 1 and 2, it comes nearer 1.5, right? Then we have Jupiter. Jupiter is almost nearer to 5. So this is like 1, 2, then 3, 4, and 5. So this would be at the midway. Uh, but yes, on the logarithmic table, it would be looking in a very different one. Similar way over here, it will be starting from 0 0.1. So it will be going to 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4. So if I look at Mercury, somewhere around 0 0.39, so 0 0.1 to 0 0.2, 0 0.3, and then 0 0.4. Mercury would be nearer to 0 0.4, that is 0 0.39. And if you go further, we will be finding Venus, that is 0 0.72. So yes, uh, just to make you easier for things to understand. Similar way, this is phi. So if I look for Saturn, this is almost nearer to 10, that is 9.54. So it is there almost on the line. Right. Next from here is uh, the planets. Let's say, for example, we have Uranus. So Uranus would be from here, it would be 10. Then this would be 20, 10 to 20. And then we have go up to 100. So this is how the log tables have been built up. So bigger distances can also be compared in a better way. And this is why most of the time logarithmic scales have been used. Why? Because in it then makes things much more easier for us to calculate. And for comparison purpose also, it becomes much more easier. Let's say, for example, the planets which are nearest, those have been kept uh, on this scale. And if you go further from, let's say, one astronomical unit till 10 astronomical unit, you can define that together into one scale. Right. Again, the distance as it grows bigger, let's say from 10, it goes to 100. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 and 100. So somewhere around Neptune, which is going to be 30. So this would be placed around 10, 20, and then 30. So this line would be coming around over here, right? Same is for Uranus because this is 20. So from 20, we go to 20 and we get this line over here, which is coming to Uranus. So uh, that's how these distances have been measured altogether. And it becomes much more simpler. See, this diagram is very simple altogether. Um, and uh, if we go further, yes, we can apply the same scale to not only the solar system but we can go also for the galaxy and after galaxy we can go for the entire universe also so things should be much more easier for us to understand on the basis of that right so we'll just have a quick recap altogether. if you see in terms of uh, planets yes so we had these planets all together and looking at the sun which is really huge we just try to look at the distances here i mean like this I mean, like the planets are not exactly at this distances so the just not to scale right if we put something around on the scale yes so the distances which are there in terms of for uh, the planets in terms of astronomical unit so this is how long the distance is there so this is just a pictorial view nothing more than that this is not to scale this is to the scale right and looking at the scale from a 
again very precise point of view and very logical point of view which is logarithmic scale and if you put across all the planets together on this logarithmic scale then probably it becomes much more easier for us to understand so this becomes our base and this becomes our unit for further calculations so definitely we'll try to interpret things on the basis of that and probably try to process the information which is there going to be ahead on the basis of this scale and then probably we'll try to get into the details also so stay tuned and if you have not subscribed to our youtube channel till now our humble request is to please subscribe to the channel please do like the videos which are there and also comment on the videos because that is very important and if you are also interested in the courses which are there so you can definitely go on our website or just contact us across on the, the details over here so we'll definitely touch in get in touch with you okay see you thank you bye take care